And all praise and glory to Yahweh, Bahashim Yahweh Shai, Wahawah Kakwadash. In Hebrew, that will be given praises to our Almighty Heavenly Father, Yahweh, in the name of His only begotten Son, Yahweh Shai, and the Holy Spirit, which is the Rakakwadash. Double honors to our elders and apostles, the great millstone, for teaching us this truth. Honors to the brethren that's laboring doing the work to push this gospel, risking their life and freedom to do so. Peace and blessings to the hopeful elect, the one third of our people that's returning back to this truth so that the Lord will have mercy on us in judgment. So we back with another lesson through the power and spirit of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. And this lesson here, the point of it is going to show that everything in life is a teaching moment. Every event, every conversation, everything that we see during these last days, there's something that could be learned from it. Especially when we identify certain things and break it down with the scriptures to make sense of it. And also, during these last days, the Lord will have signs and wonders all over the earth to signify that we at the end because life is a game it's like a big mystery that you got to solve and if you solve the mystery you win the game and to solve this mystery the lord has put clues all over the earth everything is a sign and it's a wonder and those clues that we will see Again, it would be the signs and the wonders that the Lord will place throughout the earth, but it would be the prophecies. Those are the biggest clues to solving this mystery of life. And we see different signs and wonders and clues every day and walk right past it or don't even consider it. But us being the one third, um, the spirit of the Lord is put on us to consider all things, to analyze all things. We know nothing happens at random. You know, it was all part of a grand design. So to open up this lesson, we're going to start Book of Second Ezra, chapter 9. We're going to read verses 1 through 6. He answered me and said, Measure thou the time diligently in itself. And when thou seest part of the signs past, which I have told thee before, then shalt thou understand that it is the very same time wherein the highest will begin to visit the world in which he made. So, especially the man of the Lord, but us in his truth, we measure the time diligently. How do we measure the time? By the signs. We can know where we at in this process by what signs are coming to pass, what prophecies are happening, you know, through signs and wonders in nature, world events, you know, things that's going on amongst the people. Those would be the signs that we would measure the times to see how close we are to the end. Verse three, Therefore, when there shall be seen earthquakes, this is one of the signs, one of the prophecies for us to know how close we are. So again, when there shall be seen earthquakes and uproars of the people in the world, we see in both of these, then thou shalt understand that the Most High spake of those things from the days that were before thee, even from the beginning. So the Lord established the ending before the beginning. And this is what the big mystery is about. It's prophecy. This stuff is already written. So the key to solving this mystery of life is in the scriptures. Verse 5. For like as all that is made in the world hath a beginning and an end. And the end is manifest. So yeah, everything in the earth is going to be a beginning and an ending. But the end is now be made manifest. It's coming to pass. Even so, the times also of the highest have plain beginnings and wonder and powerful works. 
So yeah, in the beginning of things, the beginning of the world was made known by wonderful, powerful works and endings and effects and signs. So the end of the world will have effects and signs. The effects will be prophecy. Signs will be what? Signs in the sun, signs in the moon, signs in the stars, you know, stuff in nature, stuff in the earth. Those will be the different signs, like the blood moons, the solar eclipses, a sharp increase in so-called UFO sightings, and even like the Euphrates River drying up. Those will be signs. So again, even so, the times also of the highest have plain beginnings and wonder and powerful works and endings and effects and signs. So in the end times, we will keep an eye out for the signs to signify that we at the end. But when we come to a, the book of Sirach, also known as Ecclesiasticus, chapter 36, verse 6. I'm sorry. Yep. Uh, show new signs and make other strange wonders. So during these end days, the Lord will show new signs, things that's never been seen before, or at least by this generation in a long time, and make other strange wonders. Glorify thy hand and thy right arm, that they may set forth thy wondrous works. That hand and the right arm will be Yahweh Shai, who's making all these things come to pass through the power of our Heavenly Father Yahweh. So we will look for new signs and strange wonders. Now, something that one of the brothers sent me um, that I'd be in contact with, he sent me this picture right here. Something he got off, I think it's TikTok or Instagram. We know the Euphrates River is directly tied into Bible prophecy. You know, throughout the books that are prophets and in the book of Revelation, and that during the end times, the Euphrates River would dry up. Now, they sent me this picture, which is an aerial picture of the Euphrates River. And you see it's pretty dried up, but you see right here, it makes sort of a symbol. Now, I got what that symbol is right here. Now, this symbol will be the Greek letter called Omega. It did in my phone. I typed in Omega, meaning in Greek. Now, let's read this. Now, this character, this letter Omega, it means the great end. So, this is a sign signifying that we at the great end, you know, the end of the world. Great letter, Greek letter Omega, the 24th and last letter of the Greek alphabet, Omega, essentially means the end of something, the end of this world, the end of this kingdom, the last and the ultimate limit of a set or the great end. Without getting into a lesson in Greek, Omega signifies a grand closure, like the conclusion of a large-scale event. And what's the conclusion of this large-scale event? It's the fall of Esau, the end of Esau's world, which Esau was a so-called white man, the end of prophecies concerning the empires of the earth. Now, again, the Euphrates River is making a symbol that looks like the letter Omega. That means the great end or the conclusion of a large scale event. That means prophecy is wrapping up. That means it's end, the, the, the end is coming. So when we go to the book of Revelation 22 and 13, We're going to read this real quick. What Yahweh Shah say? I am Alpha and Omega, 
beginning and the end. We know Omega means the great end, the conclusion of a large scale event. So let's read this again. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. So we know that this character Omega means the great end, the Euphrates River, you know, is showing that symbol. And one thing we need to keep in mind, you know, the simple minded will say, well, that's just a coincidence. But in its truth, we know that there is no coincidence. Everything is by design. Nothing happens at random. And that's why when we come to the book of Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 12, verse 1, for thine incorruptible spirit is in all things. Let's read that again. For thine incorruptible spirit is in all things. So the spirit of Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai is in all things. So when we see stuff like the letter Omega in the Euphrates River, the spirit of Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai is in that river to make it show this letter Omega to let us know that we at the end. The Lord designed that. Because again, the Lord will set forth clues and signs and runders throughout the earth for the wise to consider, to try to make sense of all these random things as most people view them as to make sense of what the Lord is doing and that we know that we at the end of this thing. So this got the spirit of the Lord, the spirit of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah written all over it. This is art. This is the art of the Lord. This is a portrait. To be a clue that we at the end. It's like we playing I spy, keeping our eye out for the signs and the wonders, keeping our eye out for the prophecies, world events, measuring the times through the scriptures. So one more time, for thy incorruptible spirit is in all things. Not only does this make the letter Omega, no coincidence that Yahweh Shah said he's Alpha and Omega. He's the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Going back to the book of 2 Nezra, chapter 9, verse 6. Even so, the times also are the highest have plain beginnings and wonder and powerful works. So the beginning of time was characterized by wonder and powerful works. You know, creating the water, the earth and the heavens, the sun and the moon, creating the trees and the animals. Those will be wonder, powerful works. But the ending of the world will be characterized by effects, which are prophecies and signs. This is a clear sign that we at the end. And also, too, when we come to the book of Ezekiel, not only did Yahweh Shah say he's Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last, but he also said in the book of Ezekiel 75, Thus says the Lord Yahweh, and evil and only evil, behold, is come, and end is come. The end is come. It watcheth for thee. Behold, it is come. So yeah, the end is uh, fastly approaching. And the end is come. The end is already here. That's why it says it watcheth for thee. So the end is already here. It's waiting on us. We not waiting on the end. The end is waiting on us. The date of the end is already set. So that date is waiting for us to get there. And this signifies that the end has come. It watcheth for thee. So let's get that one more time. Ezekiel 76. And end is come. The end is come. It watcheth for thee. Behold, it is come. So again, it's got the spirit of Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shai all over it. It's going back to Wisdom of Solomon 12 and 1. For thine incorruptible spirit is in all things. And when we go back 
to what this letter Omega means, let's read this again. Omega essentially means the end of something, the last, the ultimate limit of a set or the great end. It signifies a grand closure like the conclusion of a large scale event. The spirit of the Lord is even all over this definition too. So we in the book of second Ezra chapter six, we gonna start at verse seven. All right, so when we read this, then answer I and say it, what shall be the parting asunder of the times? Or when shall be the end of the first and the beginning of it that followeth? And he sent it to me from Abraham unto Isaac, when Jacob and Esau were born of him. Jacob's hand held first the hill of Esau, for Esau is the end of the world, and Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth. Yeah, so Esau is the end of the world. So when we say end of the world, that don't mean end of the world for everybody. It's the end of Esau's world, which Esau is the so-called white man. Now let's look at this definition again. It means the end of something. And what end is coming? The end of Esau, the end of his world, the end of his kingdom. Because right now, Esau, the so-called white man, has rulership of the earth. He's in control of everything. He's the number one nation of people in power. But he's fallen out of power. His rulership is coming to an end. So for Esau, it's the end of the world. And this letter Omega means the end of something. What's the end of something that's coming? The end of Esau's world. The last. The ultimate limit of a set. And Esau's rulership, the so-called white man, has been in a set. Because first, it started with the Greeks. And then it came with the Romans. And now we have what we have today, known as the United States of America and Europe. So Esau had three times to rule the earth. So this is the limit that he's reached. The third time's the charm. He don't get another chance. So this is his great end. And this signifies a grand closure. You know, when the show is over, the curtains close. So we can close the curtains on Esau's rulership. It's over like the conclusion of a large scale event because life in existence is a movie. So this movie of Esau part three is coming to a great end. It's about to be a grand finale and that grand finale will be the nuclear destruction, which is nothing more than mere fireworks to Yahweh Shai. Because usually a great king they be playing music, fireworks going off. Well, to welcome in your Hawashai, it's going to be fireworks going off. That's going to be the nuclear missiles. And those nuclear missiles is a token of Esau's end. A token is another word for sign. So that's a sign of his end. And what's been going on as of recently, China, North Korea, Russia, the United States, everybody is amping up their nuclear arsenal, building up their nuclear weapons. That's all for this great end. So again, the incorruptible spirit of the Lord is in all things. Nothing is at random. There is no such thing as, as a coincidence. Everything is for a reason. Everything is for a teaching moment. Everything has something that could be learned from it. This would be those new signs and strange wonders that the Lord was set at the end for the wise to consider. And this lesson to show that, you know, everything in life, we can turn it to a lesson, filtering it through the scriptures. The scriptures covers everything. It's not nothing going on that the scriptures don't cover. Because again, it's all by design. 
But that's it for this lesson here. We at the great end. So until next time, Shalom.